Thank you. It's a great pleasure for me to be here, and thank you, Iska, for having me and for inviting me to speak. This is my second MOVE Congress, and I'm delighted by the opportunity to speak about one of my favorite topics, sports diplomacy. So today I will speak from my own experience. I will share my experience and knowledge on how a sports person can become a sports diplomat, and more importantly, how a sports organization can become a diplomat. I am a founder and a president of a non-governmental organization called TACT, which stands for Together Advancing Common Trust. We are a relatively young organization. We are based in Skopje, in North Macedonia, and we exist for almost five years. In the previous years, our main focus of work was advancing gender equality, developing leadership through sport, and promoting social inclusion in sport and through sport. Now, in 2016, as an ex athlete and a representative of TACT, I was selected by the U.S. Embassy based in Skopje to participate in a global sports mentoring program, which is a sports diplomacy initiative by, uh, under the U.S. State Department. Together with 15 other girls, we stayed for almost two months in USA, and the core messages of that program was to empower girls and women through sport. And that is the first time that I've heard the expression sports diplomacy. Nevertheless, in 2017, the year after, me and my colleague, we went to speak at the annual conference on uh, EU and sport that was held in Norway, and Richard was one of the speakers there as, there as well, and he spoke about sports diplomacy and how it has a place within the modern diplomacy, and I have to say that I was immediately attracted to sports diplomacy. I want to understand more about sports diplomacy and what sports diplomacy exactly is. So upon our, my return to Skopje, I started doing some research. I tried to read as much as possible about sports diplomacy and to, to grasp exactly what sports diplomacy is. And just as Jacob said, there aren't many information available because it's very new yet growing field, but whatever I, everything that I found on the internet was about sports diplomacy on a high level, and there were many examples about sports diplomacy. There were the examples of Indian and Pakistan cricket diplomacy, um, United States and China ping pong diplomacy, and even the controversial um, basketball diplomacy where uh, Dennis Rodman pays visits to North Korea. There are also countries that have strategized sports diplomacy. So Australia is the first country in the world that has released sports diplomacy strategy. And they're doing very well in this. And USA, they have sports diplomacy division office where people work only on sports diplomacy programs. Programs like sport visitors, sport envoys, and global sports mentoring program where I was participating in 2006. And I see that these two countries are the leading countries and yet there are many countries that are following their steps and that they are thinking about drafting and um, producing strategies, countries like France and UK and Colombia and Croatia and Spain. So there will be more and more countries following these steps. But then while I was doing the research and I was studying and I was tr trying to get deeper understanding about sports diplomacy, I realized that everything that I've read about sports diplomacy, it's on a high profile level. It's about governmental sports diplomacy. And I realized that Sport and diplomacy, it's beyond the state context. And I strongly believe that you know, we have to stop seeing the relationship between sports and diplomacy, diplomacy only through the embassy window. Sports diplomacy belongs to everyone. Sports diplomacy is not reserved only and exclusively to accredited officials, and it shouldn't be delivered only through official channels. So at that point, I really ask myself, so what if we, ordinary people, people like me and you, like us, people coming from the sports 
grassroots community, people from sporting organizations and sport, sport clubs. What if we use sport as a tool to amplify and to deliver positive diplomatic messages? We can do that, can we? Because we as sports persons, we know how to, we have exhibited already solid diplomatic characteristics and capabilities. We know how to negotiate. We have been negotiating on and off the pitch for many, many times. And we know how to communicate because you know, we know how to deliver the message in a very positive, non-offensive and efficient way. And therefore we are credible and we are powerful communicators. And all our NGOs and sports organizations, the core messages that our sports organizations deliver and promote are human rights and principles and ethic. And that sport is fundamental right and universal right for everyone. And therefore, why can't we amplify diplomatic messages? We have all the cap capabilities and capacities. We know sport very well. We speak the language of sport. We have all those diplomatic characteristics. So we should just realize that we have this potential in our hands and we should start using it. And this is what exactly we have been working with intact for the previous year. Together with ISCA, we implemented a project on grassroots sports diplomacy that I will talk about more in depth in the second panel. But in this project, we chose Kosovo as our partnering country because in the past, there were tensions and conflicts between North Macedonia and Kosovo. And we really saw this challenge that can, we can face and resolve through grassroots sports diplomacy. So we managed the overall objective of this project was to build long lasting relations between these two countries. And we did it very successfully. We managed to get together and to bind two nations, youth, and two communities and municipalities who are still working even when the project is over. So once we realize that sports diplomacy on a grassroots level, it's very efficient and it works very well, you can't go back. You just need to continue working in this direction. And what we would like to do in the, in the future is that we want to elevate this project on a national level and we want to expand it also with different neighboring countries in the Balkan region. What I want to outline here and to make it very clear is that we need to fully be aware that we have this powerful mediating device in our hands. We know that through sports, we can, it's, it's, it's cheap, it's fun, it's effective, so we can see tangible results. We know that it connects people on a personal level because we share the same passions, values, and interests. We know that sports bring people, nations, and states together and transcend those differences we have in religion, in ethnicity, in, in, in language. And we know that through sports, we manage to build lasting connections. And that is because we connect with people on a personal level. We know that when we play sports, we pour our heart and soul into sport. And we don't just create ad hoc relations. We really create relations that are long lasting and sustainable and partnerships as well. And therefore, I strongly believe that we should be the one to inspire governments to take our steps and to support us and to collaborate with us. Just like Aaron did, we don't have to wait for governments to initiate this process. We can start and then they can follow and then we collaborate and we take this grassroots even on a larger scale. What I want to sum up from this presentation is that we need to be fully aware of what we have in our hands. We know that in this globalized world where now more than ever we are changing the traditional roles and we are changing the century old belief that diplomacy is a privileged domain of accredited and professional diplomats and it can be almost exclusively conducted by employees working at MFAs. I think that politic I think that sport is much bigger than politics, and sport is more powerful than any government. And we, sports people, we play much more great and role 
than just organizing sport. We represent much more than playing sports or physical strength or stamina. We play a very vital role in this, in this uh, yet, uh, new yet growing field of sports diplomacy. And uh, sports diplomacy, in it is, it's in its infancy, and it is really up to us, people like me and you, people coming from the grassroots level, uh, it's really up to us what we will do in the future, what kind of steps and actions we will take, and how we will manage to shape the further and the future development of sports diplomacy. Because according to me, I think that where it will matter the most, it will be at a grassroots level. Thank you.